but, it didn't really uh, come up where you didn't walk into the octagon. That was like the that was like almost ultimate warrior right there. That was like ultimate warrior. Oh wow! Thank you. We've been having like uh, pro wrestling like marathons in the house now that Shayna Baszler's there. Oh my! She got all of us into wrestling, and she, they, when they're not watching wrestling, they're playing like the video game. You know? So yeah, we're, we're constantly. And I have um, Ultimate Warrior, uh, Hulk Hogan uh, wrestling buddies. Well, you have the Hulk Hogan wrestling. I had, but I got uh, a new one present. And so uh, yes, I, I gave. Uh, have you ever seen Ultimate Warriors like interviews out of well in character and they're gibberish but out of character? That guy is a nut job. Crazy, crazy is yeah. he's batshit nuts. Seriously, Google who is it? Jim that, it was it was it Macho Man Randy Savage who that I was watching nuts. his his he, he like made like three circles in the interview. Did you ever see that one? And he was like he, always, he like spun and he like switched sides with the interviewer like three times. And he was like walking around him and the guy was just like. Following him in the same way. The guy fought a police dog once. Savaged it. He had a house in the office. I read about it. They couldn't get him out, so they sent a German shepherd in and fought the dog in like a household. I know, but I don't. I didn't use it. Couldn't get enough waffles or what? I guess not. Well, Randy Savage was no, he was in that job. Yeah. I don't know how we got over. Because I changed. Oh, yeah. yeah Ultimate yeah. Warrior Walk. Ultimate Warrior Walk. Because you were like, I might have even tweeted that to my 100 Yeah. I'm not the type to like walk around and give high fives and sing Katy Perry. You guys really hated on Katy Perry, you and Marina both. Well, it was really funny because Marina's last fight. She Which was funny because you did have the eye of the tiger and she really didn't. Nope. No. Nope. It was misappropriated that lyric. <laughs> Um, but uh, what's it called? Yeah, so Marina, the chick that she fought last, came out to Katy Perry that same song. Really? And she was telling me later, she was like, Man, I was waiting to walk out, and I just heard that shit come on, and I was like, There's no way I'm losing to some bitch. Came out to Katy Perry. You can't come out to Katy Perry. And, like, she was, so I'm in the back, I'm trying to be all serious, and, da, 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 and when her walkout song came on, the one thing that came to my mind is somewhere in the universe, Marina Shafir is staring at television, being like, Fuck that shit. You can't <laughs> I just knew I pictured my mind as Marina and she was, wasn't she? She totally was. And she that, wasn't in the arena? No, no. Oh. She, uh, everybody had their own little little viewing party. But um Yeah, she lost her mind. And then yeah, those are things that were like trying to pull my attention away from the fact that I'm like in the most important moment of my whole life is you know, Katy Perry and shorts and like all these kind of random things. Like it was funny, I was talking to Shane the other day and she was talking about one of her fights. And uh, when once she was the most relaxed, and she was about to fight, and uh, she looked across and noticed someone's shirt in the audience, and she started thinking, "I'm like, is there something wrong with me that I'm noticing thing? Am I too relaxed? Am I not in the moment? I'm looking at this person's shirt. Like, there's so many things pulling your mind away. That it's like it's, it's funny what the what's fighting for your attention when you're trying to stay focused. You know what I mean? Yeah. I always thought that was the coolest thing about athletics because it's one of the few times you're completely in that freaking moment when you're competing. It's pretty badass. Yeah. It's just curious, when, uh, when Showtime mixed um, that exploited song with, with uh, Bad Reputation, like a second choice, did you have like a list of songs? Or? Well, I, I was kind of at a loss at the moment because that they, they like just swung it on me yeah, yeah. right before my fight. And um, actually, Rage Against the Machine just did that Rise Against concert. Like they just got right. together for that one concert and I went to it like you know, right before that fight. And so I was like, all right, fine, I'll come out to like a rage song or whatever. You know, I just threw some stuff out there. And, you know, I love me some Rage Against Machine, but I just didn't feel like it was my song. <laughs> it wasn't your jam. It wasn't my, yeah, it was my jam, but it wasn't my jam. And <laughs> that is italics. Uh, if you're trying to write that, that part was italics. Um, but, uh. <laughs> it would have been. <laughs> exactly. But, it was my jam, it wasn't my jam. <laughs> yeah, you tilted. Those words were tilted. <laughs> and then, um, yeah, it, was, it came to me like one day. I was like, "What about meditation?" They're like, "Jump jet, blah blah blah." And then, um, it was for the first music fight. It was the first time I used the band meditation. And then it stopped. And it was so appropriate because we were, you know, starting the whole like feud thing. And you know, I was bad chick, as I usually am. And um, 
So I was like, oh man, it's perfect. But it wasn't until this last fight, because this is like the third fight that came out of the song. And Dana was saying it. It was like it was never more appropriate than this fight. And everyone lost their minds because that was the song. You know, and it's gonna be like it's gonna be on my song the the day I retire. Just like you know, California Love is for for Raya. You know, everyone has like their set songs. That's that's the song. It's my jam. I talked to Randy Couture once, and I asked him how because he always went with classic rock, and he said once the guy paid him to act, to be able to choose what song to really come out with. Yeah, it's like holy shit. But hey, you find wacky ass rich people. Cool. Did you watch Anaheim? No, I thought it was coolest in Anaheim because you know how they have those screens, like in between the seats, and just when your song came on, just the lights they do. I think that's the coolest place for the entrances. See, that's the one thing I really miss, is being able to watch fights in the crowd. Because you don't, like, feel the energy of the place, like, in yeah. the front. It's nothing, like, when you are there live and then you watch it on TV, like, it wasn't, you can feel, as loud as it was for your fight, like, you watch it on TV, it doesn't it didn't seem like, yeah. I mean, you could actually hear you on TV talking. Yeah. We couldn't, and we were like, you know, 20 feet away from you talking, and we couldn't hear shit. Yeah. Like, I couldn't hear myself talking. Wow. I, I, I couldn't hear myself talking. I had to like make sure to put a coherent thought together. When all I could hear was everyone booing, and I'm just like, get this out, get this out, right? But um, yeah, it was cool. It was cool to say that. But I, I, I miss like not even being like in the front row, like being like one or two rows up. Because first of all, the view is better because you're at eye level with the thing I'm not you know complaining right, right. Like, <laughs> hashtag rich bitch problems nope. but but it's funner you know because you feel like everyone around you and you see better and yeah I tried to um, it's like I think I was like with my mom it was like her first fight that my mom went to is when Manny fought um no. Another Miller, uh, guy. Michihiro Omagawa. Omagawa, yeah. And then um, I wanted to go to the back to go to the bathroom, and the security guy was like, yeah, I can't let you get it. And then I was like, oh, shit. And so I was like, Mom, so we should do a run. So we're going to go up the stairs and, and, and go out there. So we just, I was like sprinting. I was pretty much like pulling my mom. And uh, we, we tried to get back in time to watch you. Machito was fighting somebody. Uh, and uh, yeah, uh, we were trying to get back in time. And it was just like Red Rover. Everyone just stood in front of us. It's like, no, it's even more. And um, yeah, we, we like ended up sitting down in one of those like favorite spots. It was like, you know, we couldn't the security guard wouldn't let us in yet. So um, we just kind of so sat down. So you basically in like auxiliary, the auxiliary section where they put media and guests. I think that's where you were, right? Because that's where you gave the high five. Man, I think. Yeah, yeah. But this was after that. So oh. and like the security guard wouldn't let me use the bathroom down there. So I had to go up that, through the bleachers and down which is like production and um, yeah I, like we couldn't even watch the fight because I mean everyone's super cool everyone's super nice but it's like we, we can't even like interrupt on like just sit there and watch it so um, but my mom was cool she was uh, it was the first time like she came to me with me to an event so she never really like saw me get like mom she was you know, kind of like to talk about it, like yeah whatever yeah whatever whatever, whatever. <laughs> I was like no mom this is like it's like a big deal now. It's like serious. It's like, uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> Your mom's like, she has to like see it and experience it for herself. She's the most hard to impress person ever. So I bought her this thing. We literally have people like like chasing us. Like it's 20 days later. Like sprinting, you know? And then um, I turn my mom and it's like, you know, so is it like, you know, more than you thought it would be? And she's like, no, I, I, already, knew, I already knew everything. I was just like, she's not impressed at all. Oh, nothing. Nothing at all. What, what would I... We, we like just finished this last fight and we were already like at dinner that night and my mom's sitting there next to me she's like so with this next girl you're gonna have to be doing like she's already giving like grilling me what to do and I'm like yes mom yes mom yes it's just, just the way that she is she just moves along immediately you know but uh um, yeah she, she's awesome though like if she wasn't so hard to impress I don't think I would have worked as hard as I did to try and impress her you know so yeah she's not the type to like sing your praise 
praises if, you know, if you cooked a batch of cookies. Like, she might actually sing my praises if I cooked a batch of cookies just because if, if no one died in the process. I can't. Like, what, what do you think of my cooking? Like, <laughs> when have you cooked? Ever, never. I haven't cooked a single thing for my whole life. Yeah. 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 Like, I was like camp, but I was like for that too. All I mean, you I ever told me about was top ramen, and that's not really cooking. So. Yeah. How are you? Thank you so much. Cancel all of it. Like scheduled before the fight came on. Yeah. Okay. No. Yeah. But you know, it's whatever. Sure. I'll, I'll rest when I'm dead. <laughs> I got too much to do. Um, maybe after this next fight, I I, I always have this list like. That just grows. It was just like, well, after the fight, I'll, you know, dot, dot, dot. And the thing just grows, and I never get through anything. It's like, I'm going to do this. I'm going to run and jump and climb a tree and do all these other things. And then it just ends up, I just just sat on my couch. (laughs) That was my whole break. I sat on the couch. I, uh, what else did we do? We watched Entourage. And, um. The last season sucked, right? We're only on two. We're only on two. We got through, yeah. We always got through, we got through all the big. Bang theories. Wow, we could just watch TBS for that. That's a ton of episodes. It's a lot. Yeah, we we want. That was almost our whole camp was Big Bang Theory, and then we ran out, and then we're like, ah, oh, we need a different show. But if you're training and fighting people all day, you don't want something like intense. You know, everyone's like, let's watch Breaking Bad. And I'm like, I don't want to go to bed stressed out. Okay, I don't want to think about problems with crap all night. You know, like I'm sorry, I can't. So we try to think of something uplifting, and Entourage was the best we could do. How's your Game of Thrones reading come along? It's not going well. I, it's not going well, and every single time someone wants to play like a South Park episode that makes fun of Game of Thrones, I'm like, no, because it's like we know this is the story. Spoiler, yeah. yeah, it's spoiler. Like I saw part of it, and it already spoiled some of it. It's like, uh, yeah, I gotta get on that. So you're still in the first book, right? Mm-hmm. I know. They take a while. You gotta get. I know. I know. I gotta keep trucking. Put it on no one lets me. Like a chapter a day. Right? Yeah. No one lets some me of them read. are kind of long though, like 25, 30 page chapters and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Hang in there. Alright, I'll, I'll get on that. <laughs> no, I'm like, I had like a big reading phase when I was in Bulgaria. I, I burned through a bunch of books. And then I got home and just there's so much to do that it's good at the end of the day. It's like, I saw like brain junk food. Yeah. Or like, I'll have a couple days where they don't need me and I'll just have nothing to do. And you know, I'm in Bulgaria, you know, but, um... Are you saying Bulgaria is not the most fun place ever? Well, Bulgaria alone <laughs> in the winter, there's only so many things you can do, you know, but a lot of my free time was like, just call my driver and be like, hey, you want to go to Starbucks and then drop, drop me off in the mountains? <laughs> <laughs> when is it? He keeps getting like it keeps getting canceled and Reno. Yeah, it's in New York. Oh, I'm not gonna go. It was supposed to be that he was gonna be fighting a week ahead of me at the MGM, and then it got moved, and then it got canceled. And sorry, I gotta shut this phone up. Where is it? I don't know. You. Sorry. Um, yeah, Victor. So it's a New York against two. Uh, <laughs> 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 It's good to me. Everyone's looking good. It's, um, I just don't know everybody's dates. Which I feel terrible about. I just wait for George to tell me. They should do every. They should do backflips for that guy. I think he's like the next big thing. Are they still at that point where he's not big enough to where he's going to get that mega fight because he's still small enough and too scary for them to put it on the line. It's not exactly. Gonna 
thing. He's too scary. They've been complaining about not being able to get him fights at all. Yeah. You know, that's one of the biggest things changing. And now it's got HBO behind him. They're all in on it. They're willing to overpay and just find it. Now he's got to get somebody to take the overpay. Well, that's the thing. HBO's now seemingly building stars because Showtime's taking all the big game guys. Yeah. So they're doing it. I mean, he's, he's right in the center of it. He's so fun to watch. He's so charismatic. Yeah. Yeah. Good boy. Good boy. Oh, I love him. Yeah. Oh my God. What were we saying the other day? It's like I love him. He's not just a G. He's a triple G. He loves you. I just interviewed him the other day. Yeah. He watched her fight. He's actually said on his his favorite MMA fighter. Yeah. So yeah. And then Cain Velasquez after that. Yeah. He better be because we're showing up. Yeah. Yeah. Big Bear. Big Bear. Big Bear. Well, I'm doing two camps back to back, and for the Carmouche camp, we went to Big Bear to kind of um, just give that feeling of starting camp because it's really hard to just sit on your couch and just be like, okay camps now you have to mentally switch yourself over and so um, I wanted to do it for this last camp but I just got back from filming uh, Fast and Furious literally on the six week mark and so um, I just spent all this time traveling on it I just told everyone I'm like look I don't want to go I don't want to leave home again you know it's just I'm already home and starting camp I don't need to do anything to remind myself that I'm starting camp because you know I'm home I'm here let's just do it and um, now doing two camps back to back it's kind of difficult to get, you know, just had a fight, you get out of, the, out of like, ugh, sit on my couch mode and, you know, eat the $300 of alien jerky that I got on the way to Vegas. Nice. It's expensive stuff. I know, especially because I only eat, like, the buffalo jerky, which is, I think... You don't go ostrich? I never found their ostrich. Do they have it there? they Wait, have it at Alien Little Jerky? Rock? Are you talking about Little Rock, the little place? I'm talking about Alien Jerky in Baker. Oh, okay. I was talking about... There's a place in like Little Rock that everybody stops at. I forget, but they have like all kinds of jerky everywhere. Little Rock. Little Rock. Little Rock. Little Rock. No. <laughs> it's off. It's uh. I don't want to point it up. It's like that way. <laughs> Which way are you I'm in Arkansas. <laughs> no. Well, unfortunately, I always drive. So. Did, you know this? Did you think of that? And I was like, no, I knew that it was an entirely genuine and not fake moment, and it was entirely the right thing to do because I didn't think about it. It was me. It was just like, nope. And I'm like, if my first impression is that, then even if I took the time to think about it and change my mind, I think it would have been the wrong decision. Because if that's my first inclination, then it's, it's like that for a reason. And um, yeah. another book, Link by Malcolm Gladwell, covers a lot of uh, your first impressions. That's another one of my favorites. So, yeah. Um, I, I don't regret it at all. I, I stood my ground in a very difficult situation where I would be and was extremely criticized for doing so, but um, yeah, if, if you've done um, things that go beyond your career and it becomes personal, then I just, and I really think that if me and her fought alone in our gym and there weren't people there watching, she wouldn't have offered a hand to me. It was, an enti her actions were entirely influenced by being watched and my actions were all despite being watched. Nobody had a key. That's the best bag. Don't listen to me. You can run the show. If anything goes wrong, like, it's my fault. I did it. What am I grounded? No, you you guys gonna ground me? Hey, the camera thing threw me under the bus. I know you threw me under the bus. <laughs> what? Ah, you're like, oh, Grant brought it up to my attention. That's why we got it. So it's all right. I wasn't throwing you under the bus. I asked for it back. I don't care. <laughs> I was being honest, man. <laughs> I need some more coffee. Right? Yeah. Well, you didn't have any. They bring it in I had a little bit before, uh, actually, I walked in here. Uh, expressamente. You guys are big on coffee, aren't you? You know what this last camp? I know Maria is. Yeah, Dolce She's got me really working the green tea. Yeah, groundworks. 
Oh, I yeah, I work with a lot of stoners. I'm like, really? <laughs> like, yeah, it's a coffee shop. I'm like, all right. That works is where it's at, man. You will literally have like an A list celebrity and a crackhead be right next to each other in line. You'll just deal with them. I, I went and sat with her. Isn't that really the epitome of this? That's what it's all about, right? <laughs> That's what Bringing it's all about. Together. It's an economical melting pot. But, I think uh, New York's like that too. Like right here is like really some nice building, and then you know, three three houses or three blocks later is some shitty neighborhood. Yeah. I'm just glad they got the security cameras now. Ronnie's got like a, a nice security camera set up outside of her house because there's some weirdos up in the alleys in And we got an attack dog. Yeah. yeah. Mochi's like bite sleeve train and it's like it's crazy. She'll hear something going on like in the front door. Like she'll like look out and, and then she'll go out the back, check the back, run the perimeter of the house and then come back in and everything's cool like like she's totally impressed with herself too she's like oh my god it's all good it's all good like she'll see her like what and she checks the front goes around the back runs the career mirror and comes back in it's like don't worry guys don't worry like she's all laggy and happy I did my job yeah she's a 90 pound Dogo Argentino which is a all white mastiff they're like bred to like hunt boar and, uh, hunt boar and puma like yeah they, they actually took um, like fighting dogs and then bred them with all these different hunting breeds to get like the dog a dog aggressiveness out of them so they can hunt in packs these big game dogs and so they put like these Kevlar vests on them send out a whole bunch of them and then they just go take out like pigs because um you know, there's a lot of like board crop problems like like Hawaii and Texas I think there's a lot of uh, problems that yeah so they just take like little uh, packs of these dogs set them loose and they um just they go out they find the pigs they like pull them down and um, I guess the traditional or like Argentine way to do it is like the dogs hold them and the, the hunter cuts it with a knife and then yeah that's it she did her research National Geographic actually did a really good special on uh, on dogos because it's like a 200 year old breed and they're calling it like the evolution of like you know dog breeds it's very few genetic problems because they're so new yeah they're really hard to get in North America though me? no no the dogs the dogs? no she doesn't have any crazy no because they specifically like bred the aggressiveness out so because um, you can't have fighting dogs hunting together in a pack will fight each other over whatever it is so they had to they, had, they specifically bred them to make them like nicer but so. you did break up a fight with them I and did paid for it. I did but it was the other and dog that got naked. naked I know <laughs> dog bite other dog naked, naked. this is the, the this is Endora the Explorer you don't have to break it down into three steps okay there's other things that happen in the middle <laughs>